How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? And welcome to Platypus Scotsman. Hope all's treating you well at this moment in your life. And uh, we're going to go through the second part of the Borderlands build, the one that I did the wiffle balls. It's the first ones. You just can, can go back and watch the the build if you so choose. But this is going to go through the painting portion of it and uh, cover that. Not going to go into details on some of the pieces, uh, just because I've covered it so much in other. Um, tutorials and things like that. I've also noticed one thing that a lot of people who watch these videos don't subscribe. So uh, you can do me a fantastic favor and just subscribe to the channel so you can see future tutorials coming up. I plan on getting back on the wagon and uh, doing more tutorials and getting back into the hobby. Summer is kind of a rough time for me. Uh, I like to go camping a lot and for whatever reason uh, just hit a funk and uh, couldn't really get into all this stuff very much, but I am jumping into it, but I don't want to keep saying but or uh or am, so let's just get right into the video and enjoy. So one of the things I was really concerned about when I did this was the flimsiness of this after I started going through it. I thought I was going to be able to shear things up by just putting things in different locations. So what I thought I would do is get some uh, Gorilla Glue and just try to see if it put some sand on it and shear it up and it, it did exactly that. The base is now really sturdy with some Gorilla Glue and didn't warp really that bad. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to create a wash with some sp Spice Brown and some water and just go through and apply it everywhere. Well, to the main building anyway, and then go from there. This is mudstone, it's gonna do dry brushing pretty much everywhere with this. Okay, this is sandstone. What I've done is I've already kind of gone and highlighted this a little bit, just kind of show you, and then I'm just gonna do these right here. I was debating if I was gonna do this or not, but I do wanna have more to, multiple colors on it. And on this type of place, right, well, on this circle, I only want the bottom to be highlighted. And then obviously the dome, but I, don't, I wanna be very gingerly on this, gingerly. I don't want to have a whole lot of highlight with this color, but like, see like right here, I want this to be more exaggerated. And then I also did up here too. Top of the dome, I don't want to go heavy on it, but I did want to kind of bring it up a little bit, just a little bit more. And I don't care if it's splotchy, because all this is out in the desert, and so it doesn't really bother me. And on these tubes right here, I just want to do the top part. All right, I'm gonna use lead belcher. I think it's lead belcher. Yeah, lead belcher to go around paint a bunch of stuff metal because this is metal. And then I'll rust it up, but I just want the main structure brown. I want everything else kind of be metal, like it's just raw pieces, obviously.
Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around with just some Juji Violet and just kind of shade the bottoms. I'm gonna start down at the bottom as the paint is removed from my brush, then I'll go up a little bit so it's not as thick. Just kind of add a little bit of a different hue. This is Sarah from Sepia. I'm gonna go around and just hit areas with it. Just kind of darken some things up, make it look more organic. Not gonna go very high. I just kind of wanna hit the bottom trim. I'm also gonna hit the metal too. Just kind of give it a, a rusty, I don't know, just a grime feel. Especially along the bottoms of all this stuff. I was thinking about doing some Agrax or shade too, but I think the sepia will be good enough. It's darkening up pretty good at the bottom. And so I think I'll stick with sepia. It's working for me. Okay, what I did is I mixed some spice browns and some corn red and just made this right here. It's kind of watered down, not a ton, but what I want to do is I kind of tested it right here to see if I liked it. Move this around. So you can see there. So I kind of did it right here. And what I want to do is I just want to put a little bit right here. But as I do it, just kind of play with it a little bit and I'm going to mix some water with it. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to cover solid. I'm gonna wick some of it away with my brush. I've just removed stuff off of it. And then as I get less and less, I'm just gonna kind of spread it around. And then as it more and more gets removed, I'm just gonna kind of go out a little bit more. Just kind of give it a hue around the edge. I'm just messing with different ways to do rust instead of always doing it the same way. Just kind of experimenting, playing around. So it's kind of a different look for rust. So what I've done is I've put down Martian 
well, texture, Martian, iron, earth. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I did it correctly. I didn't Google on how to do it. So turns out, turns out, but I do like the color. So I'm fine with that. Now what I'm doing is I'm just doing mudstone and I'm just going around and just kind of dabbing it. I don't want to, I don't care if it's all the way blended in because I am going to do a wash over top of it. So it doesn't really matter. I just want to kind of get the overall color and, and I do want it relatively close to the main color of the building, but it's going to, I am going to do kind of a reddish tint to it uh, to kind of match the the Martian texture. And I did go around and do some details, but I've done details on a lot of things and I'll, it's a, just a lot of the same repetition as far as making things look like jewels and different things like that. And the sad thing is, is because it's been so long since I've done this, it's turned into one of those projects where I just want to get it done. And so therefore I'm not taking my time on some things. And that's kind of how projects go sometimes, at least with me, is I just kind of, I don't know, lose steam, uh, kind of hit a funk. Last a little while as far as projects are concerned. Uh, but now I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. And this room gets blistering hot during the summertime, even though we do have a central air. So we went out and snagged the air conditioner for this room. Uh, but I have to turn it off every time I film, so but it does keep the room cool. Anyway, kind of get the idea. Now I just gotta let everything dry. I just painted that kind of an orange, black, and white color kind of from uh, District 9 and just did some minor minor things. I'm not going super detail on some stuff just because I really don't care, which I don't know if that's a good attitude or not, but that's the truth. And then just did some little highlights here and nothing really major. Kind of want this to be, um, as Tyler put it, kind of a, a, sub a subdued piece. Uh, but now I have to let everything dry and then I'll do a wash over everything and see how that goes. But anyway, this is mudstone. So I went and uh, just put a sepia wash around all of this or whatever you want to call it, uh, a shade. And I over here, I just kind of messed around with some moot green and just kind of did the border because I want to put some type of acrylic in here. And so while the sepia is still wet, I'm just going to go along the edges with the moot green and kind of blend it into just kind of use some of the liquid of the shade to kind of melt it into the red, so to speak. Oh, and with that Martian stuff, I determined that I probably needed a really good layer of paint, uh, some type of GW paint or something down below instead of just the primer that I used for this overall piece. It didn't work really well because I think it was a satin finish and so it didn't work very well. Yeah, live and learn. And when I do finish this, I want to have a, a dark layer right or a dark, darkish line right above the green. Just kind of give it a little bit of contrast too. So that's what I'm going to, I'll do it at the very end uh, after all the acrylic is in there. I'm going to make a wash to put on the sand and it's terracotta and then I'm going to use a a translucent black, but you can actually just use a black if you want to. You don't have to do a translucent black, but I was just trying to learn this new color, these new colors that I have obtained. And also, if you haven't noticed, my mic crapped out because I forgot to charge it. So I am ad-libbing, and uh, right here I'm probably thinking, wow, this is going on really smooth, and it's going to be such a cool thing. And then I put it on, and it's like, huh, okay. I'm going to have to do a lot of dry brushing on this bad boy to get it to look good. Anyway, right here, I just kind of want the rocks and everything to be able to kind of slightly show through. So there's a little bit of more, a little bit more variation than if I was to just to blanket the whole thing. So it is thinned down, but I want it uh, thick enough to be able to cover everything that I'm applying. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply uh, three different colors of uh, dry brushing. And uh, I want, uh, the first one's gonna be heavier, the and obviously the second one's gonna be a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, less and then the, the very last one I don't want to apply pressure or have much of it on at all and uh, Just I want I don't want to totally drown out the previous colors But when you do a dry brush with multiple colors, you still get uh, a Different look than if you were just to do one and it kind of that's how nature works anyway is in layers So that's why I want to do that Kind of did, uh, I don't know why I pointed at the top of the dome, but there must have been something profound I was probably saying on 
on there. So uh, we all miss out on that when I don't, uh, when my mic drops out. So, but here I'm just showing a little bit of uh, the first color. And then here shortly, I'm gonna transition to the next color. And it's gonna be amazing because everybody enjoys the next color. Now anyway, here's the next color. Uh, like I said, not as thick, uh, a little bit less. I still want some of the uh, stuff uh, to show through. I'm also not going all the way to the edge on this in most places to kind of give that variation or that gradation uh, and uh, show the edges as being darker because I do want a dark edge to the uh, where the Martian is. Oh, oh, we've, we're now on to the third color. The third color, and man, you guys are probably so lucky that I don't com do commentary on this all the time. I would probably want to shoot myself. Uh, I don't know what I did there. I transitioned something. But anyway, third color, and I'm about to wrap up, and then we're about to get done with this. Bye. Well, that concludes part two of the build. This is the build. There's a lot of things I wasn't sure about when I did this piece. One was, uh, at first I thought the plastic was a good idea and then it started to behave like MDF and started to warp on me. But when I put the Gorilla Glue down, it really helped a lot. Uh, I also didn't cover the tufts. And uh, you have to forgive my dog, she's walking on my mat and her claws are making that little clicky noise. But these are the tufts, I've used them in the past uh, for various things. Some are winter tufts, some are Wasteland tufts, but they're army painter tufts, and that's all I did on the piece as far as that's concerned. I used uh, uh, hot, <laughs> I used Mod Podge for the Wasteland pieces, and that's no real complex there. And I didn't cover some of the details as far as like doing little minor details like the gun and things like that. I've done other pieces that have that. Plus you can just kind of, use the same techniques you do on miniatures as far as that's concerned. I just kind of want to give the overall feel of this. Uh, I do need to practice up or learn the Martian thing a lot better. That didn't go very well or didn't go as I had hoped, but uh, there's enough cracks in it that it's fine. Uh, and I did use a lot. I don't want to really use it on a big piece like this again. I'll probably find something else in the future. I do believe there's stuff in hobby stores that do the crackle stuff. Uh, but anyway, like I said at the, at the beginning of the video, I've noticed a lot of people don't subscribe to the channel and uh, be awesome if you did and it would really help the channel out to subscribe and plus you'd be able to see notifications and things like that if you hit the bell of uh, future tutorials. I plan on getting back into this and I want to do more sci-fi because I need some stuff for the sci-fi board. Might be based off of Borderlands and things like that, uh, not 100% sure. Plus I also want to do some little pieces for photo shoots for when I paint miniatures. I like my miniatures to be on something just other than just a black surface. So I'm gonna do that as well. But if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. If you wanna see photos of the finished pieces and different things, you can go hop over to our Instagram account at Platypus Scotsman and check us out there. And that's where I'll be posting miniatures, well, miniatures, pictures of this material uh, that is produced. Anyway, hope you're having a good one and hope your hobby's doing fantastic. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I can tell just from the short time I haven't been doing this that I have uh, gone back and not really comfortable in front of cameras again. I don't know what my problem is. When you get out of that rhythm, I guess you have issues. Anyway, take it easy. Uh, hope you have a good night or a good day. And uh, remember, what my remember what my mother used to always say, that anyone can do art. Ciao. Cheers. Ooh.